Hey, Cryptizens. Tonight's stories are Biden to issue executive order on crypto and CDBCs next week, Fed officials to be barred from stock and crypto trades. The date is February 18th, 2022, and welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm your host, Nick. The cover model for the podcast is Tex, and together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. We bring you the new stories on familiar topics. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. If you're new here, and you find that you're liking the show, subscribe and rate us. If you're on Spotify, you can do that right from the app. Give Tex and I five stars. It's going to help other people find their way to this podcast. Now, there's a lot to talk about, so let's go. So, adoption. And, okay, really, this seems like a hot topic these days. But that's what happens. Stuff goes through in streaks. You might have stories about nothing but hacks for a week. And then a week of nothing about fundraising or something else. So adoption. You've got Georgia. Now this is Georgia, the American state. They want to give tax incentives to Bitcoin miners. Illinois too. Colorado wants to accept taxes in Bitcoin. Wyoming wants their own stablecoin. Which is an interesting idea. I'd kind of like to hear more about that one. I don't know if it's going to be overstepping the bounds of the federal territory. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. But looking further afield, Ukraine yesterday just made all crypto legal. Looking forward to seeing how that shakes out. And remember, Erdogan said Turkey's crypto bill was any day now. I'm not saying we're ready to hit parabolic levels of sovereign state adoption. But it's very exciting, isn't it? Now, before we jump into the stories, let's take a quick look at the markets. The crypto market cap is $1.9 trillion. That's up 2.64%. At the time of writing, the top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin down 1.32%, Ethereum down 3.3%, Tether, Binance Coin down 0.56%, and USDC. The top five NFT collections by 24 hour volume on OpenSea are Eden Hoarder up 138%. Now, as a note, it's been interesting watching them kind of, they just showed up and they've been climbing up. Cat Blocks Genesis Collection up 99%. Bored Apes up 83%. Azuki down 27%. And Metatoy Dragon Z up 43%. Keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices. So do your own research. Biden to issue executive order on crypto and CDBCs next week, reportedly. As early as next week, we could have some executive orders on crypto. They're expected to direct government agencies to study different aspects of the crypto space. The plan? Create a comprehensive regulatory framework. Now, the rumor is... They'll order the Office of the AG, the Attorney General, both the state and Treasury Departments to research the potential rollout of a U.S. um, CDBC, uh, Central Bank Digital Currency. And while this is happening, Bloomberg reported on Wednesday that something of a rift has developed between the White House and Treasury over crypto regulation. Treasury disputes the account, says it's inaccurate. Not only that, but Alondra Nelson... Now, Alondra is the newly appointed director of the Office of Science and Technology Policy. They're going to be providing an evaluation of what would be needed to support a digital dollar, specifically what would be needed in terms of infrastructure. They're also going to issue a report on blockchain technology in 180 days. That's with an expected update on environmental impact in 545 days, just under a year and a half. Now, on top of this, the FSOC, the Financial Stability Oversight Council, would study cryptocurrency-related financial stability issues. Then you've got the SEC. It's like alphabet soup over here. You've got the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. You've got the CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and the Federal Reserve, and the FDIC. That's the Federal Deposit Insurance. They're the ones that insure up to like $100,000 of account hold funds in a bank. And then you've got the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. You've got all these people. They're going to be considering measures to protect markets. 
They'll also be responsible for reporting back to the president on risk management methods, ways to reduce the risk that crypto adoption suggests. And then there's going to be another level. And they're going to be studying the impact of di digital assets on market competition. Now, that group is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the Federal Trade Commission, and the Office of the Attorney General. As well as that, you've got both the director and the chair of both the FTC and the CFPB, the, uh, the Federal Trade Commission, they're going to be reviewing privacy concerns. And this is Biden's 81st executive order between Obama and Trump, 296 executive orders. Rarely has crypto made an appearance. I mean, crypto just doesn't make an appearance in an executive order much. Now, in 2015, Obama hinted that it would be legally justified in confiscating crypto attached to, quote, significant malicious cyber enabled activities. That basically allowed government officials to use the National Emergencies Act to seize funds or other assets without prior notice or of a listing or determination. This would later get extended in March of 2021 by Biden through April of this year. Since then, a task force has been formed by the Justice Department and some other agencies. They created the National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team an initiative aimed at going after platforms that, quote, help criminals launder or hide their criminal proceeds. In March of 2018, Trump issued an order banning U.S. residents from owning or engaging in transactions of any crypto digital currency, digital coin, or digital token released by Venezuela's government, specifically Venezuela's Petro coin. Trump also mentioned digital currency fraud in a July 2018 order. Federal officials to be barred from stock and crypto trades. Never thought I'd actually see the day, but it happened. The Federal Reserve formally adopted tough, sweeping restrictions on officials investing in trading. Looking at the sweeping ethics scandal that plagued the U.S. Central Bank last year, it's really the only appropriate response. So, new guidelines were announced last October. These guidelines restrict active trading prohibit the purchase of individual securities and boost disclosure requirements. And that goes for policymakers and senior staff. These new rules will come in on the heels of some potentially unusual trading activity in 2020 by top officials. Now, this came while the Fed intervened aggressively to shield the economy from the worst of the COVID-19 effects, economically speaking. Those officials have since resigned. The FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee, unanimously voted these rules in. Any violations will be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, I don't know the specifics on sanctions that have been covered yet. Fed Chair Powell requested these new rules, and some see it as kind of an admission that the previous standards just weren't quite enough. This is also a response to demands from lawmakers like Senator Elizabeth Warren, who called out a, quote, culture of corruption at the central bank. So these are the rules. Officials are prohibited from holding individual stocks, sector funds, agency securities, bonds, commodities, cryptocurrencies, foreign currencies, and derivative, I'm sorry, derivative contracts, and from engaging in short sales or buying securities on margin. Officials must provide 45 day non-retractable notice for transactions receive pre-approval for purchases and sales, and hold investments for at least one year. The time period straddling FOMC meetings, during which transactions are prohibited, were extended by one day to align with the Fed's communication blackout period. Transactions will be prohibited during periods of heightened financial market stress, like 2020. Regional presidents will be required to disclose transactions within 30 days as officials and staff of Board of Governors already do. These rules will apply to all members of the FOMC, Regional Bank First Vice Presidents, FOMC Staff Officers, 
the manager and deputy manager of the Fed's system open market account, Fed board's division directors, and other individuals designated by the chair, as well as the spouses and minor children of all affected individuals. The rules take effect May 1st, with pre-clearance requirement taking effect July 1st. Affected individuals will have 12 months to dispose of prohibited holdings, and new employees will have six months. So basically, they're going to force uh, senior Fed personnel to limit their investments to highly diversified investment vehicles. So if they're going to invest, it's going to have to be in things like mutual funds or ETFs. So that came from an official basically on a, a briefing call on Friday. ETFs, right? Maybe that's going to be what it's going to take to get a spot Bitcoin ETF. And that's going to do it for us tonight. What do you think? Did we get it right? Reach out and let us know. Send us an email at crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. That's crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. You can also find us on Torum and Twitter. Links to those platforms will be in the show notes. And please, if you could, like, subscribe, share, comment, and review the podcast. Also, if you're listening on Spotify, they do have a feature where you can rate podcasts right from the app. So, Give us a five-star rating. It would really help Tex and I out, and it will also help other people find their way to this content. So getting the word out there helps them and us. And with that, may all your investments go up and to the right.